Hello YouTube. Brr, it's cold. <laughs> All right, what you're looking at is my homemade 12 volt ice-based personal air conditioner. It actually is an air conditioner that runs off 12 volts. It will not cool down a whole vehicle. Like my van here, I won't cool it all down, but um, it will cool down me. You can see I have it pointed right here where I am sleeping. It's blowing right at my face and chest and my body and chilling me. Right now, inside the vehicle, it says 81 degrees because that's what it is outside. But this, um, this little blower right here, blowing right at my face, is um, making it ice cold. So it's not... It's not going to cool the interior of the vehicle. Maybe it might cool it one or two degrees. But it's going to make you able to sleep because it's blowing literally ice. Um, you can see I just basically modified the old system which had like the round canister that had um, a smaller amount of ice in it. I decided to go larger so that I could put in a 10-pound bag of ice or get a one-gallon water jug and freeze it and put it in there and put some water in there, which I'm going to start doing then it doesn't cost me anything to operate once I, you know, get frozen water from work. But you do need um, frozen water or, you know, ice, basically, to make it work. Um, it'll work with um, just regular water. It might cool it down just a little bit more because you're getting moist water. But I'm in Florida where the humidity is very high. And a lot of people say this stuff doesn't work. Um, if you're just using water, it might not work so well because the air is already humid. So putting, you know, moist air blowing at you might not work as well. I did it in the past and it worked better than not having, you know, the air blowing at me or cold air, wet air. But right now it's actually blowing ice cold air because inside the bucket, well, let me show you how it works. I basically have the 12 volt fan unit that I normally hang there. You can see when I have it blowing like this on me, it's cool, but it's not as ice cold because inside here, it literally is just nothing but ice because it's already started to melt. So um, basically the fan hits the ice and blows the cold air and forces it out these vents that I made, which are just like um, 90 degree, you know, uh, pipes. I'll show you guys how to make this later. Um, just take it apart and stuff, but you can look at it and kind of see how it's made. But this thing actually swivels. And the reason it swivels is you could put this between, this air conditioning unit between two people I have one pointing one way at one person and one pointing the other way at another person. So it can cool two people. But right now I have it just both focused on me to cool. There's nothing special about it. It's just, you know, holes that I cut that were the right size and a hole for the fan. And if I really wanted to, I could mount the fan. So like right now, I have the fan blowing on me and it's nice and cool, but it's blowing 81 degree air, which means moving is probably going to feel more like 70 five seventy six degrees but when I put it here over the the hole so they cut the hole perfectly sized for that put it there you can see it even it sounds kind of like air conditioning because it's forcing the air so it's pulling the air from the vehicle into it through there going it blowing it through to the ice which is down there and forcing it out these holes right at me and I, I got it basically aimed right at my face and my body so that um, when I sleep in the vehicle it's gonna be ice cold. And that's kind of how you do it. Now I had made this unit in the past using, um, I think Dollar Tree components. I got a Dollar Tree styrofoam container and then I didn't have pipes. I just punched two holes or one hole. I punched a hole in it on the side and I punched a hole on the top. So that was the original design and it worked. You know, I, I use the same 12 volt fan. This fan runs off the vehicle's house battery system, which is 12 volts. Um, so I'm able to run with free electricity because I generate electricity by driving around. And now I have solar, so I could run this during the daytime. The only thing that really requires energy um, is ice, getting ice. So if you have access to ice at work, you know, like you can have access to a freezer and you can freeze your own bottled water, you can get free ice that way. Or you can um, go to gas stations and get cups of ice, you know, request or buy cups of ice for 50 cents. And um, you might need um, three or four cups, you know, to have some ice in here, enough to cool you down for the night. But you could also buy, if you're going to get three or four cups for 50 cents, 
I would rather just go buy a 10 pound bag of ice. They're usually between $1.50 to $2. Uh, I think Walmart sells them in this area for under $2. So $2 a night to get ice and you can have air conditioning blow on you for $2. That's not too bad. But like I said, I am going to be using frozen water from work. And what I will do then is just freeze a, a one gallon jug. So the one gallon jug I tested will fit in here. So I can put the one gallon jug in there. And to help disperse the air, I might put water in there, you know, so that there's more surface area for the cold air to hit. And it'll be a little bit moist. I kind of like it moist because I think it actually does make it feel cooler. Um, so I'll put the frozen jug in there and then um, add some water and it'll become ice cold water. Then have the fan blowing on me. And, you know, that water the next day can be used for hand washing or whatever. In my case, I'll just take the jug of frozen water back to work the next morning and then freeze it again so I'll rotate with a couple jugs of frozen water and that way I can always have um, free air conditioning at night so other than the initial cost some of you might be wondering how, how, how much it costs to make all this wasn't too expensive this is a um, an igloo igloo ice chest that I picked up I got this from Walmart and you can see here this is the the model it is a 13 12 ounce can unit. It's a, it's a nine quart. What does it say? It says a nine quart, eight liters. So it's an eight liter or nine quart igloo cooler. And the reason I went with this one instead of the cheap um, styrofoam one was I wanted it to last. I figured, you know what? Summer's here. I'm gonna splurge a little bit. So um, this this particular cooler, I liked it because it's larger than um, the little blue one. The little blue one. The fan fits right on top, and you just cut a, you know, if you watch the other video that shows you how I make the blue one, it works, but it only holds like one-third or one-half of the ice that this one will hold. So you don't get it as cold. It doesn't feel as cold. It's cold. You can feel it. It works, but this one's like twice as good, okay, and it doesn't cost much more. It just takes up more space. So basically, I got this unit, and... You know, the fan I already own, but the fan you can buy from the automotive, automotive department, it is, a, um, it says it's a 12 volt DC 0 0.8 amps unit, runs off 10 watts. So, you know, it's just the automotive fan, you know, the, the kind with the clip on. But I might take apart the clip and then bolt it down if I decide to make it permanent, or I might just leave it like this so I can move it around. You know, I can take the fan off if I want to use it like normal. I can put it on here and just ignore that it doesn't look so aesthetically pretty. But um, that's pretty much it. You know, and I, I got the on off switch. I can adjust. I need to adjust my uh, length of the cable and stuff there a little bit. Yeah, so that's all it takes to make one of these. Uh, and then what I did was I basically had to decide how many holes I wanted to vent. If I just wanted to cut the front, which I didn't because I wanted maximum space for the ice. I just figured I wanted, only wanted to cut the roof, you know, not the roof, but the, the lid. So this go around, I decided to go ahead and splurge and get some of these. Um, I'm going to pull it apart right now because it's kind of hard to shove it back in because it's a really tight fit. But these are like 90 degree, 90 degree pipes, you know, the, um, what are they called, corner pieces or 90 degree? I'm having a hard time focusing here, but. So it's a short little 90 degree. It looks like this on the other end also. And to cut the round hole... Um, if you watch my other video where I use the um, the drill bit, it's designed to cut holes like for doorknobs and for pipes and stuff like that fittings. I used the maximum size one that I had, which I think was like three inches. But it ended up being a perfect fit. So it was kind of tight, which is good. So it fits really, really tight, but you can spin it still. So the pipe goes through the lid and you can spin it. And I did that. I kind of had to you know, look at the lid and see where I could cut it without cutting through to the plastic underneath, you know, so it wouldn't hit anything. Then I did one on one side, checked the other side to make sure it wouldn't hit anything when I drilled the hole, drilled the hole, punched these two in there. And then I also, to, to measure the hole for the fan, you can see how there is a hole and it's perfectly sized. See how that, I cut the hole there. What I did was, I actually, this, this fan unit, has little screws. I don't know if you can see the little screws there. There's four of them on the edge. I took the screws out 
also that I had the um, fan cage, the black fan cage, and then I drew a line, you know, on the, the, the front side so that I took the front side off and I took the front side and laid it down here upside down and traced a circle. So I traced a circle, you can see the black line there. I traced a circle, then I took my jigsaw and I cut the circle. To start the hole, I used my round piece, you know, that I used to cut this, and I just went to one of the edges, cut it, made a hole through, then I took a jigsaw and went along the edge and just trimmed it all along the, um, the black line that I had drawn. And um, you can see it's a perfect fit. If I wanted to, I could remove this handle unit and take the screws or something and screw that in or glue it in place. And then the thing will look a lot more professional and um, won't slide around. But I might leave it like this because then I can take the fan back off and mount it back up there, you know, if I want to. In case I, I don't feel like carrying this big AC unit around. But it's really not that big. It's the size of um, the little cooler. So this is a really good addition to have to your vehicle. Total cost, $10 for the cooler, $2 for each of these. So that's $4. So $10, 4 And then the, the fan is anywhere from $12 to $15. So you got, let's say, $15 for the cooler and the pipe, $15 for this, $30 to make the air conditioner, and it's a 12-volt unit, which is very important. Now, like I said, it doesn't generate, it doesn't cool by, like, a regular air conditioner, um, pulls, you know, the heat off the air and cools the air that way. It pulls moisture and heat off the air that's inside a room, and it blows the heat out the back. That's why you got to vent a regular air conditioning out the window outside because it gener it makes it cold on one side and hot on the other. This one doesn't work like that. This one takes cold, which is already made in the form of ice, which cools the air and then um, blows that cold, ice-cold air right at you. So by morning, most of that ice may melt and become water because that's where the cold came from, you know. The, the cold is coming from the ice directly onto me. It's not going into the room. I mean, it is hitting the room a little bit. Let's see if it got cooler. So it's down to 80. Before it was 81 degrees, now it says 80. So it's cooled it down by like one degree. And overnight, it might cool it down to three or four degrees, the whole room. But mainly, it's designed to point right at me while I sleep so that I feel ice cold air while I'm sleeping instead of feeling like I'm sleeping in 80 degrees. I actually feel like I'm sleeping in like 70, 65 degrees or something like that. You can hear the ice is melting and moving. And if you keep the unit clean, you actually have water that you can drink later. <laughs> ice cold water if you wanted to. If, if you wanted to and you didn't have the whole thing full of ice or you have it partially full of ice, you can open this lid up and actually put soda or water or whatever in there and you can have ice cold soda to drink, you know. So it still works as a cooler, that's a, a bonus. So it's an air conditioning that continues to work as a cooler. Now keep in mind if you have food that, that kind of smells, has smells, then when you blow the air, you're gonna be blowing smelly cold air at you. <laughs> so don't put anything in there that releases a smell like onions. You, you'll be blowing onions at yourself, you know, the, the, the aroma of onions. So I hope you found this video informative, if not helpful. Hopefully it'll help some of you who are having a hard time wherever you're staying. I know people say it doesn't work so well in Florida. You know, this kind of stuff works better in a dry in environment, but it does work in Florida if you use ice and you point it right at you, like this close where you're laying down, so that you're basically just blowing cold, ice cold air right at yourself as you sleep. So until next time, everyone, take care, have a good night, stay blessed, please stay safe. Bye-bye now.